Hey everyone, this video is going to cover step two of the three steps to build a backend getting started guide. So in the last video, we discussed the database, database tables and how to add data to those tables. This video is going to cover step two, which is to understand how your API interacts with your database. Uh, so your API defines how you exchange data from your database uh, to the outside world. Okay, so in the last video, we described our database like a filing cabinet that holds all the data and content and information for your application. So if your database is that filing cabinet, uh, the API is gonna be like an office clerk. So anytime that you need to get some data from that filing cabinet, first you have to go through uh, this office clerk, which is your API. So your, the office clerk is gonna uh, process your request based on whatever information you need. It's gonna go to that filing cabinet, search for that data, pull it out, process it again, and then relay that back to you in a way that you will understand. So that's the job of the API. So how do we get to the API page? Well, of course there's the navigation bar on the left. We can also hit this link on the top. So I'm just gonna click that. And here we'll see that we have this API group called public. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit explore. And in here, we're gonna find all the uh, CRUD API endpoints that were generated for each of our database tables during Jumpstart. Uh, additionally, we have this link to the documentation in Swagger. So we're auto-documenting all your API endpoints for you automatically. But back to Xano, uh, let's understand more how the API actually um, communicates with the outside world. So here we have some different endpoints. I'm gonna click into uh, this post right here. And this, what this does is it is the create and CRUD. It's gonna add a record to, in this case, the merchant database table. So in this view, we have the basic workflow or anatomy of an API endpoint. Let's explore a little further. So first there's inputs. So any information that your API endpoint uh, needs to take to understand its request. Here, we can see that there is a name of our merchant and a description of our merchant as the input. Two is the function stack, and this is the actual inner workings, what your API endpoint is actually doing. In this case, it's going to add a record to the merchant table. There's one function in here. Lastly is the response, so what we're getting back, and this is optional. In this case, we're gonna get the new merchant record. So one of the great things about Xano is we can actually run and test this API endpoint right here in the tool. So in the top right, there's this button that says run and debug. So when I open this, this window opens up and inside these green parentheses, we can actually add the inputs for this API endpoint. So I'll go ahead, I'll add a new merchant name here. I'll say High Street Deli. Uh, the description is gonna be Deli Sandwiches. And I'll go ahead and hit run. And what's gonna happen is now we have a new merchant record that's been added to our database table. We see it was a success. And here's the response, that new record. So that's a post command. Um, next, I wanna go and talk to you about this get. So if I go into this get, which is gonna say query all merchant records, um, what's gonna happen is we see this very familiar workflow or anatomy of our API endpoint we just saw. Here we'll notice there's actually no inputs because this get is actually just querying all the merchant records or pulling all the records from a merchant table. Um, two, in the function stack, we have a different function in here and that's gonna query all the records. And lastly is the response. So we're gonna see all the records in the merchant table. So once again, I'll go ahead, I can run and debug this because I have no inputs. All I have to do is hit run and look at that. We'll get both of our merchant records back. Uh, the one I added in the last video and the High Street Deli, the record I just added with that post command. So that's a little starter for how uh, the API uh, sends data to the outside world. Um, there's more videos on also how to do the update, delete, so all the CRUD API endpoints you saw create and read. Um, so I highly recommend you check that out if you're unfamiliar with how those work. But I will see you in step three that shows you how to connect Xano to a front end.